everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your Art Sherpa, and today this is the last day for us. We're doing this gorgeous fairy tale painting of Lechuza, and we're on our last day. Um, if you're not familiar with this, the Big Art Quest is a weekly series where we meet for a shorter incremental segment, about an hour, and we focus on an area of a painting, and we focus on an area of a painting, and it lets us do more complicated artwork than we might traditionally be able to do. So this is her fifth, fifth video. So she was a big one, yeah. I think. And I, we're going to be finishing up her dress and the flowers today and sign her. And then that'll let us get on to next week, which is going to be Morgan Le Fay. Mm. I think she's going to be fantastic. Big Art Quest 2018 took a little bit long. <laughs> so whew, I should have said uh, six of these and then six of these. And that's how it kind of worked out. But I think it ended up being perfect because it's letting everybody catch up. If you're here for the live, I just want to say hi, welcome. Um, these are a little more kind of drilled in and focused, but they're also a little more relaxed. We kind of ease along in the pace a bit, you know, answer questions. There's a lot of support here. I'm really loving seeing everybody's stages as they have been posting and sharing them in the groups. That has been pretty fantastic. On the mic is my husband, John. Hi, guys. He keeps me focused. <laughs> yeah, an attempt at it. There's like... Ooh. Which is, tough. which is tough. It's tough to keep me focused because I might just wander right on out of the studio and go do something. <laughs> so he's going to track me with cameras. Uh, try to catch your questions as you can. If you have a question, put those in all caps. Yep. Um, if we miss a question, sometimes I'll read those after. And if it's something really related to the lesson, I may come in and answer that in the comments. So even if we don't catch it during the live, though, we do try to catch them. I will try to get to questions that are about the class even after. Go through and I also see everything you say in chat, so you should know that. Yes, that's true. Okay, so let's turn around and get on in. All right. <laughs> okay, so here she is. We still have a little bit of our gritting left over from when we laid her in. We've got to put in her dress today. And then once her dress is in, we are going to throw in the rest of the flowers and we're going to be done. Um, this particular one might run a little bit longer than the other ones just because I want to see that this is the last class and we resolve her today. Mm. Out right now, I have titanium white, I have Mars black, I have phthalo blue, I have cad red medium, and I have a tinting white, but you could use zinc white or mixing white. You just want a transparent white. Just in case I pulled out some acrylic glazing liquid gloss, and also just in case I have some Prussian blue ready to come in and, and address any emergencies that I might be having. And I'm going to start weirdly with a short-handled number 20. <laughs> Right, what you just want is a small bright that's going to give you some control. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. Is why at number 20? <laughs> and we're going to come in here and add a, the kind of highlights and shadows and those little elements of her dress to start pulling in those details. Now, try not get too wrapped up into this because we're going to put so many flowers in front. And they're going to be so thickly placed that you don't want to do a bunch of detail work and then lose it all, you know, in the painting. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start working on the shading and I'm going to add a little of my phthalo blue into my black here. And it, when you see me pulling it out on the uh, on the palette, you can kind of see the blue cast to it. I find that to be incredibly useful. You can see me adding a little of that transparent white into it. And I'm going to come here and we're going to begin shading right here. So we know we've got the arm coming at an angle across here. I'm gonna just work on the chest part. Yay! Shading, shading the chest, always fun. Yep. <laughs> Actually, it, it really it's is. Im it's important to give your, your these under colors so that as they sort of peek through the flowers and all the texture, yes. it really, it looks like what it's supposed to look like, which is a girl with some flowers on her. It's kind of actually super critical. I'm gonna get a little more of my tinting white on here and then at her arm, I'm gonna come along here and we're gonna just make sure that we're pulling down. You see how I pull it across and down? I do. A sort of highlight here. And again, we're not gonna to try to get too wrapped up in stuff, but we do need to have some of these values and assessments as we go, you know, as we're trying to do things. I'm gonna come back into my darker color and I'm gonna darken between the arm and the bodice. So we're just doing some basic shading here, some basic value work to pull these spaces. See how when I 
deep in that it just pulls the arm out from the bodice so even though this is a dark on dark aspect you're still going to be you know seeing those values and those shapes i'm going to add a little more of the highlight here i'm not going to just rely on the red to pull these objects out from each other you're going to rely on the red i'm not going to do that not going to do it no no now I'm going to make sure that we've got some of this coming here and we're going to bring a bit of the darker color down, which is again, our thalo blue and our black. Now, are you anti red or is it just a artistic choice? Um, I'm going to put the red in there. I'm just not going to rely on the red. Sometimes as artists will rely on certain things to make an object clear. But I think it's important to come in and lie in the basic shading first. Ah. Uh, and then use those decorative elements to imply those changes. I may have to turn her to the side like this, strangely. Just because my easel has a lip. It's making it difficult for you to paint around. It's making it difficult for me to paint around. Now, down here, I can be quite dark with the color because that, all of this is going to be covered with flowers. That really did add a lot more depth to the surface. Doesn't it? <laughs> It's shocking how it works. Oh, I didn't think you were trying to trick me. I, I believed you. I was just, like, impressed at how much it did. I didn't think you thought I was trying to trick you either. <laughs> That's not a good thing for an art teacher to do. Art teachers should not try to trick students. Um, if you have an art teacher you feel is tricking you, I would definitely, definitely kind of avoid that. You know, Go ahead and put this here. I was totally loving that i came i bumped into one of my uh art instructors on facebook what well he, he's a he's a practicing artist he's a he's like a professional artist and he just got uh transferred to a major university and i was just sort of tracking it and uh, he, he was one of my sculpture teachers sculpture teachers oh that's awesome yeah all right so i'm coming here and i'm bringing you can see i used the edge, the filaments of my bristles to kind of start to imply the wrinkles of the fabric. And again, these can be slightly less resolved elements because the florals will be so strong in front. Yeah. Now I'm going to take a bit more here of my white. I'm going to come and add just a bit of a sunlight space there. Working these things out. Back into my dark value. So often you'll you'll find that you will just be trying to inform shape. This is really cool. Now I'm gonna imply a little bit of the ruffle. So I load with the black, I get quite a lot of the transparent white. And I'm gonna come on the corner of my brush. And pull in just a hint of the lace. And then on her neck, I'm going to bring in just a small amount. And I just use the brush. Hmm. See how we're being very vague about it? And that helps it feel a little bit more like the lace that it is. Vagueness is our friend. <laughs> be vague where you can be. <laughs> I'm going to rinse out. And I'm going to go ahead and get even a little more of my um, tinting white on there. Just make sure that this has super vigory. The vigory. Because again, we're going to have a lot of flowers in front of it. It's funny. You can see that when the gnomes go out. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's like, oh, hello. <laughs> Let's add a little of this lace ruffle to her sleeve. You see how the loosely mixed paint and the blue and black in the paint kind of create, help me create a gorgeous lace effect that's slightly out of focus. Now I'm going to go into my deeper color here, my black and my blue again. And I'm going to pull this out from the sleeve over the skin tone, blending that into the lace. Oh, look at that. Because we awesome. Similar thing here, blending it up over the skin tone 
a little bit into that lace. I'm definitely doing a similar thing here. I like it. Hopefully you are liking it too. Definitely. Da -da -da -da. I need a round brush. Well, I would like a round brush. Need is a strong word. I'm going to get a little bit of my black and my blue, my darkest color. And then I will come along here with this round brush and find this little edge. Pull that down, pull that down. Look at how that collar just exists now. A transparent collar actually was never so easy to do. We're going to do the sleeve now, same thing. Come down. If I need to add water to my brush to improve flow, I do because I'm painting with a very he thick, heavy body paint. And then after I get this lace in, this implied lace, and you can see I just am light with these. This is that uh, uh, binding where they come and they have a little thread edge, finish it off. So that's fantastic. I'm going to sip my coffee. Because I've earned it. You have earned I'm, it. I'm going to put in some little red implications here. I don't want to get too crazy because I want the flowers to be focal. But to do that, to have the energy for that, I'm going to sip my coffee. Oh, look at her lace. Doesn't it look it sheer does. and looks... transparent and perfect? So, so if you'll step away from the surface, look at that. So when you get up on it, you can really see. The, with a camera, I mean, like, you can see it because you can get up on it. But the really, I mean, that's got some really cool detail to it. And, you know. As you back out. Oh. And we let the brush do the detail. Yep. That's cool. All right. So I'm just. That's looking really good sipping our coffee. How are we today? Let's take in a deep breath. <sighs> we had slow gnomes today. They were. The gnomes are tired. They've had a busy week. We're always painting. I've done some weird lives. The poor gnomes are worked to death. No, I mean, like, they in took a 10-minute coffee break before going and telling anyone that we were live. <laughs> it's like they were slow. Oh, well, the today. gnomes were super tired. <laughs> they were super tired. <laughs> the gnomes were like, wait, <laughs> do we do a thing about announcing? Maybe. <laughs> so, yeah, that was Big cool. art quest. Always fun. <laughs> well, I got, we have coffee. Actually, we're on second coffee today, aren't we? Like hobbits. This is second coffee. Hobbits is... Or Hobbit says with coffee today is second coffee. This is second coffee. <laughs> Coffees. <laughs> there, there might be a, there, this might be a third coffee day. Oh, it's a third coffee day. It is absolutely a third coffee day. Okay. Oh, take a deep breath in. We're ready to do our painting. There's no part of our painting that is stressful. It's all just color on canvas and we can handle that. You, you say that like you're that. affirming yourself. Huh? You say that like you're affirming yourself. I'm affirming myself. I'm affirming yourself. I'm affirming everyone. We're affirming. Let's affirm it. Let's affirm it. This is peaceful. <laughs> peaceful, yo. Peaceful. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a little bit of my red. I'm going to pull some of my phthalo blue into my cad red. And this always makes kind of a brick color. Because it's cadmium, it'll remain bright, but I wanted to have some room to do just a couple different values, if that makes sense. Now, coming along the top here, I'm going to go ahead and wiggle a little line. This is that little bit of lace that she's got going on. And again, I'm not going to paint all the little details, right? Dip in water, improve the flow. You see how I thinned it and then I roll the brush and then I can get some thinned paint. So that's why I like heavy body paint because it's easy for me to modify into a fluid. But, it, you know, it's just really easy to modify. And to make it feel like lace, you're going to see that I'm breaking up little spots and I wiggle like a little brush here and there. And that will help me imply that lace space without having to 
really render it. You can render things, there's nothing wrong with rendering anything, but sometimes, you know, that's one style of painting. And no. you might be doing a looser, more expressive style of painting. Could could you read re-explain what you mean by rendering? Oh, rendering is the way in which you choose to execute the painting. Okay. So, like, in this you mean rendering it more realistic? Yeah. So, like, if I was going to, like, come in here and choose to be very realistic and very tight and very detail-oriented and maybe put 100 hours in this piece, which you could totally do, and that is one way of painting, um, and that would be fine. But that isn't really my way of painting. I wouldn't say she's abstracted in any way, but I kind of like the loose emotional space that we can get in. I like, I like that these details are a little, a little less specific. And I also think it'll tie really well with the poppies and the cornflowers and the chamomile. Now I'm going to rinse out. And so I had mentioned that I wanted to do some of this in the darker red. Now I'm going to get my pure cad red, which is a powerful color. Yeah. And I'm going to come a couple places, especially where I imagine that there might be like a little of the more light on it. And I'm going to add just a pop of red highlight here and there. You could, you could actually, if you wanted to, you could accessorize by changing these, these, these elements to sort of any color you might like. Yeah, anything. Yeah, please. Always, especially in the big art quest. If you need to change something, you're like, oh, I just... Like, I'm not feeling that color. I'm not feeling some element of an image. Change it up. This is BAQ. That's what you're supposed to do. You know that Luna would definitely make that that lace yellow. Yeah. Yellow lace. Luna would definitely, definitely have yellow lace. But see, it's not, it's not really that many big changes. I just wanted a couple values there. You're just erasing the chalk? Yeah, I'm just erasing the chalk. I'm just cleaning up. Now I'm going to start doing some flowers. As these are the furthest back flowers and other bits of grass and things can layer, it's time for me to do these now. I it's think time. It's time. I think I'm going to try doing them with my number four cat's tongue. I think that's a good beginning. And I'm going to go ahead and put out... Um, over there. My cad yellow, perhaps. I think I'm going to put out doo -doo -doo -doo, maybe a little bit um, of like that alizarin kind of crimson. We're trying to get some values in these flowers. But we want to keep them quite bright and saturated. And I may. I may play with a little cad red light. There we go. See how we have a lot going on there? Yeah. We do. We have plenty of room here to make things fantastic. So the first thing we want to talk about is the center of these, this right here, is quite dark. And I will be... Doing some more detail in that, but I just want to kind of work that out now to know that I'm going to be talking about that. And my first color that I'm going to be pulling out, and I will pull a little cad red into the alizarin, but I want it to be dark. And we're going to put some kind of Little clothes poppies back here and some buds too. What you see me doing is I'm pulling down that first shape of these little wrinkly leaves. And you can always go bigger if you need to. And I'm going to definitely let the shading happen between the center of the flower. I'm going to come along and Get the crepiness of the petal. It was interesting when I collaged these, it was like in, 
interesting to find the different types of poppies that I was liking because they weren't always necessary the same kind of poppy and I was like oh I'm so strange a little more in the cad red and you can see I'm just blending the center space because you really, really, really want to have that nice shadow. Even though we're going to come do detail, 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 I do want my nice, nice shadow there. And then coming behind here. Maybe a little more into the cad red. All right, a little cad red one, kind of lighten it up to talk about this inside mm. little petal space. Isn't that crazy how that just separates it up back into our deep red? And let's make sure that we've got some petals and flowers going through. Now, in a painting, even when you're collaging in references, keep in mind that you will have to make changes just for balance for form. I think I'm going to put out a little green now. A little bit of green. And maybe a little burnt sienna. My sienna, she's burnt. All right, there we go. So we're going to do some foliage and bits here while we're here. First part is the dark part of it, which will be the burnt sienna and the green. I think I'll come in here and begin to talk about that a bit more substantially. Filling in that little space a bit more green. And come back here and kind of imply a little bit of green there. Maybe pull it even out into there. And you may want to be compelled to cross some in front. I do like the pods. I think they're interesting. So I'm going to go ahead and get my number four round brush. I'm going to go ahead and add a pod shape. See that sort of round? Looks like an olive. I may need to almost get a little black into my green because I need to improve the cover coverage. And if you're familiar with phthalo green, it can be a bit transparent. bit of a stem line there. I put this pod in front of that flower. And maybe deepen that green. So we'll pull those pods out as individual shapes in a second. If that makes sense. For balance, I'm going to want to pull one down here. It'll be quite dark at first, almost impossible to see, I would imagine, on the video, but it's there. Put a pod right there. That's the olive shape. And we're going to add one right here. And perhaps just a few little bits of flowers. So lovely, fun, great. Now, with the green, I can go ahead and get a little bit of my yellow into it. Even if the brown is in there and it kind of mutes it, that's going to be all right. And we're going to start shading. So let's shade a bit of that pod. Highlight the right side of it a bit and maybe the tip. And this one will do the top. First layer of shading.
Just shading them, adding the next layer up higher. I'm going to take a bit of this with my round. And I'll imply some foliage. See how I'm doing that? Yep. It's dark, but it's there. Delicate. It creates another counter line that leads you in. And you're either leading people into the painting. I'm going to make some more little delicate little leaves. So that deep value has become of use now. So see how this is starting to become a little sprig of flowers? Yeah. Let's highlight some of that. I'll turn it again, and this is just to make sure I'm still highlighting the top of the pot. I'm just turning things so I'm not straining myself a great deal to address the uh, surface. Add a little flowers going up there. Little bits of leaves. Now, quite a lot more of the yellow into the green. And now I'm going to get some of my tinting white. Tap that out and sort of tap blend. If you've never seen this, is where you sort of stipple the brush up and down in it. If the paint next to it is still sort of wet, it'll let you softly blend in. Make sure I'm not in your space. Oh, you're fine. Space. Pulling that down there. We're just creating these. <laughs> okay. That's funny. <laughs> Mary said Sherpa soap just got teal out of my tan pants. <laughs> I am really glad to hear that. I had not tested that. <laughs> undiscovered things. Just sorry, that just tickled me. No, oh, it's very ticklish. And I'm very glad. I really enjoyed hearing people like that, you know, everyone is now also having some positive experiences here. So little bits of highlight. You can see him just getting in there and Popping that, and then I might pull out a little more of the yellow and the titanium white. And what you'll see is the yellow and the titanium white create quite a strong highlight. So I'm going to come and do that strong highlight right there. Notice that I'm putting it kind of down the center, and that also is helping inform the shape. That's nice. I'm going to come and get a little of my yellow and my green. I'm going to add highlights to just a few of the leaves. If I need to get my brush and water and kind of thin it out, I'll do that. That's nice. I am liking that. Mm -hmm. Little tidy touches coming out. Fun, fun, fun. Now it's coffee time before I start really kind of developing the flowers. There it is. But already, looking good. I love how she's pulling together. Are you loving how yours is pulling together? I am. Mm. I'm. Because I, I get to hang this one on the wall, so this one technically is mine. So I love how mine's coming together. 
I feel like we got to frame all 12 of the BAQs from this series. I Put think them up somewhere. Yeah, for sure. We need, we're going to need a bigger boat. If I hadn't done a vertical, y'all could have had a calendar. <laughs> you know what? I'll work it out. I think this should be a calendar at some point, right? I'll figure it's it a out. very cool calendar. It'll it'll maybe it'll be a fold out calendar. <laughs> <laughs> the very first fold out calendar. Not probably the very first. I'm sure someone else has had this problem. Generally, uh I used to work in the paper and craft I had an agent and they like all, all everything in the calendar horizontal or everything in the calendar vertical because it's easier for them on printing. But actually as the creators we can frame things as we need to for each image, but or just repaint the verticals. But I don't want to repaint the verticals. Right. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right, is everybody good? Uh, yeah. Back to our I, number four I, uh, cat's tongue, right? I will say that we are all good. Now, oh, still a little alizarin in here, but much less, right? Much less. Much less alizarin. And you can even, interestingly enough, if you want, get a little tinting white into that. Come along. And I'm going to pull just a bit into this edge. You know, we just lightly tap and pull that in. We find the edge. And much like the lace, we just define that a little bit more. A little bit more. Maybe I'll come right there and find a couple things just a little bit more. Not all the dark right away, but just some more thoughtfulness. I'm going to come right here. Pulling down just the edge. Along this here, pull it down just the edge. Come in, I want to talk a little bit about this bud. There we go. Just that edge. I love how this starts to pull together. I really do. I do too. She's going to be so pretty when she's done. And we're all going to be like, huzzah! <laughs> That's... This is a huzzah painting, I think. It's a very huzzah painting. So now I'm going to take my cadmium red light and a little bit of my cadmium red, and I'm going to half step them. I'm going to pull in almost a second layer. Creepy second layer. Maybe this one is thin, so not as deep a blending, like it's more foreshortened. Turn the paintings as you need to. How fun is that? Very fun. There we go there. Bring another little highlight here. They would just keep picking. Now on these, maybe I'll get even more into my orange highlight. Now I'm pulling more into just my orange. Which is really cad red light, but sometimes it'll read as almost an orange. I gave some to my mom and she went gaga for it. She's like, this is not bad. Pretty cool. There we go. Getting some of that there. Now, while we're here, I'm going to go ahead and pull some just pure cadmium out. Not everything, but I'm going to touch some just pure cad.
It is a luminous paint. I'm just defining some edges. Not every edge, just some edge. And that can be helpful. So the center is an interesting uh, creature. It's a bit of my green and my brown. We're going to come in here and make a little piece-sized circle. And I'm going to imply a piece-sized circle kind of right here. Then I'm going to get into a bit of my yellow and my titanium white. And paint the radial pattern. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I do. Okay, once I have that, I'm going to take a little of my blue and my black, stronger to the blue. I'm going to really get in my tinting white. And add the seeds. Boom! Sorry, sometimes I get pleased with myself. <laughs> <laughs> I get a little cheeky. You should! A little celebration! You're painting! Oh, look at that. I like it. Take that in. And then we've just got the little grasses and the little upfront flowers. Oh, I like her. <sighs> grasses and flowers. Grasses and flowers. Put out a little yellow ochre. What are you doing? Put out a little Prussian blue. Prussian blue? Where's the Prussian blue? There. Yes, it's Prussian. A little chunky, but I don't care. It's fine. Okay. So the first thing we need is a few wheats. And I don't mind grabbing this green that just happens to be conveniently here that will deepen my brown. And I'm going to come up and make a nice little brush stroke. Actually, I'm going to need to dry this. Okay. Or I'm going to drag paint all over my painting. That makes sense. So what she's saying is, uh, as you're painting these uh, grasses uh, on there, whew, look, my phone was not muted. Um, stop that. So clearly, mute your phone before you go live on YouTube because someone's going to call and it's going to be a scam because Scam Likely calls me all the time. Scam Likely call you? Calls me all the time. I don't know who that is. So anyway. Um, don't use, uh, so dry your surface. And the reason you dry the surface is so you don't drag paint on subsequent layers. Yes. Which I was about to do. Yep. I was, I was interrupted by a call by scam likely. Really? Yeah. I didn't mute my phone. Sorry. When is that guy going to learn? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not interested, Mr. Likely. I'm going to make some little seed pod strokes. Can you see these? Yeah. We're zipping down. This nice little bit of wheat. And perhaps I will come up here with sort of a counterbalanced wheat. Coming off into a distant space. We don't know where. Grass is everywhere. Notice the gentle counter counterbalance of the wheat against the wheat. Counter, counter, it's nice. Counterbalancing is wonderful. And we just need to put a few of these here and there. So I'm going to look for a place like this is a place that could handle. 
a little bit of wheat. Because the way that green goes, then we can kind of come here and add just a few of these. You don't want too many, you just want touches. Then I'm going to come right into my yellow ochre and my tint white. And I'm going to make a lighter highlight. And just kind of capture a highlight on these little wheats. I will roll out to make sure that maybe a little white to improve the opacity. Just a few. Those are nice little touches. I may go ahead and get my uh, number four cat's tongue and get my darker color. And I'm going to begin to, in this downward area, create the textural stroke that represents the base of all the plants that we're going to be putting up. And you can see why I was like, don't put too much work into certain areas because we knew we were coming back with the brush. A little more yellow ochre. So again, I'm trying very hard to imply a, a drier plant base. There's a little green in it, and that implies that something could be blooming, dipping in water. You can see, like, I've got a little green here, a little brown here, and I'm just changing up those mixes as I go. Curving the strokes forwards and backwards to the left, to the right, creating that very randomized background that we have. This might help John get really in on it so you can kind of see how we're creating a, like a wild thicket that she's found herself in. Now here I may get a little bit of my black and brown going because I want this space to be a little bit more from the dark and then come into my yellow. We're going to have a focal flower here which will pull her hair out from the dry grass but I still want to make sure that there's deep values. I'm going to dry. And yeah, as you dry, that helps the next layer not pick up uh, the paint from the layer below it. So 
if you're going to paint like a lighter color yellow over these browns, you don't want that darker browner yellow to pick up into your brighter yellow, so it's better to dry between layers. Right? Adds, yes. Dry. I'm going to add some poppies right here. John has totally explained it. I drew way up there. Ooh. You were sneaking way up where I didn't think you were going to be. Yeah, I'm basically going to be like, if you see, I'm going to come here and... Come in and get that whole basic shape. I don't want like a perfect circle. I'm gonna go ahead and get some black. Wipe off my brush and give a nice blend to these petals. Is that how we do? Yep. Use this wiggle and it creates a nice transition. Nice blend on the reds. And and then I can always get a little more of the red to my my brush. And I'll turn this again as I need to. To create any little spaces that I need. If I need some darker red here. I'm going to get. Keeping me on my toes today. I am. I'm keeping myself on my toes today. Sometimes it's nice to paint like a more closed poppy. Now I'm going to get a little of my red and my cad red light. Just a little bit more of this type of poppy. Not every one of them needs to be as detailed as this. You just want to make sure that flowers that you have now maybe I get right into my um, yellow put a little nope don't like that at all <laughs> sometimes I'll do something and be like yeah I'm not into it <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and just get right into my pattern orange and put that aside Go ahead and add that alizarin to blend that center poppy. And apply a dark opening there that kind of implies that there's a little poppy happening there. I'm going to do a couple, like, like two more detailed like this one, and then the rest are going to be a little bit looser. I'm going to go ahead and do that center. And then we'll go ahead and get that yellow and white into that next mix. So the detail is there, just less. The blue and the black. And what? 
That's right, our tinting. There we go, that's nice. Oh, I like little touches there. They, they the finish blue. it out. And yeah. to have balance, we'll need to have uh, just a couple more. <clears throat> I think we need um, maybe one right around here and one right around here. That makes sense. So I'm going to go ahead and get my alizarin and my cad red again. And I hate to lose my elbow, but I knew I was going to lose some stuff, so I'm going to lose it. I'm going to really try to create a nice, uneven, natural shape. And then maybe another one. Let's pop that right here. You can see I'm just making, I'm making circles, but they're very kind of rough edge circles, aren't they? Yeah. It's my little black color. Wonderful. Now we can have a couple more slightly closed ones. So you see you go stroke down, stroke down, stroke down, and then I do two kind of outside. Mm -hmm. A little bit of pop of red here, and maybe a little pop of red here. Balanced. Kind of chill. Now the other thing that I'm going to have going on is I'm going to have some corn flowers. I'm going to have some daisies and I can kind of let these have a minute while I take my yellow and I sort of mix it into this messy ochre area that can be my dark button. And let's put in some thoughts about where we might want our little daisies, right? Yeah. Everywhere I put one of these little dots, that's a potential daisy area. You went dot, dot, dot. I got to leave room for cornflowers, though. This dot's a little bit bigger. Get some more of this messy paint. I like my messy paint. You can see I'm just brushing out, making sure it's covering. Mm hmm I think we've got some room to put a small one right here layered over that. And I don't really think we have much room there, so I'll give it a small one there. While these are all having kind of a dry, what you can do is you can grab your titanium white that you have. And what you want to do is this can't... You don't want your first part of the petals to be your lightest color. So I'm going to, in this case, take a little of my Prussian. Look at that. And knock, cool, knock that white back. Dip in water. Make sure that there's nice flow coming off of it. But it's not a pure white, is it?
And then the direction of the button kind of tells you the direction of the pedals. So you may need to change the positioning of your surface. A bit. Those are smaller. One of the things you're going to notice is that when I'm trying to talk about pedals being kind of foreshortened, I will put them around the side and shorten them. I'm coming back and doing highlights and more details on these flowers. So some of this is still very much in progress. And I'm just trying to create that. There we go. Yeah, that looks good. When the blue pops in there, it's going to be mm -hmm. boom. We did her. I mean, I'm excited about her. I'm excited. I like it. All right. So we can come along here. Is your mom out there today, John? You know, I think she's at work today. She at work? Well, if you, if, I think she's doing her. So, uh, hi, Linda. <laughs> when and she's she definitely it. working on this one. Yeah, she's definitely, definitely doing this. So I'm coming in. I'm using the corner of my brush. You could use a round brush. Okay, I'm going to layer this one sort of in front of that one. Kind of went to focusing on your arm. I know. Sorry. No, it's okay. So that's having a nice little place in. Now I can get back to my open poppies. I'm going to come in and get a little less alizarin, more of the um, pad red. And by now, you've kind of figured out the deal. We're highlighting these little edges. And that's what helps create our a little poppy feeling. I think I'm ready for a spinning uh, easel. <laughs> yeah. They make those, I think. Oh, yeah. I'll have to look into that. I I've seen several of them. I think that's what I may actually need is an easel that spins. I'm going to look into that. I'm ready for a new easel. You know, maybe here at the front, I kind of make these. See how I, by tapping it on the side, I'm kind of making foreshortening. And closing up that bowl, aren't I? Mm. It's fun for me. I enjoy it. Little highlights there. Well, I'm at it. I'm going to grab some of this black and go ahead and apply a bit of a center on those, but not completely. I'm going to get my pad red and my cad red light together. And come and add a second little run of petals in. I'll catch these on the side. See how we've created a foreshortened one? Mm hmm And then do another little run inside this way. And that will help us create a perspective on that flower. That's a bit of a surprise. Get some more cad red paint right here. I like painting flowers. I know they're the nemesis of some. 
I have gotten some feedback that some feel flowers not nice mm. <laughs> and not helpful <laughs> in their painting. But what I would say is if you just do it more and more and more, you'll start to get the sense of like, oh, I just got to make these crazy little shapes and then boom, I got flowers. <laughs> Now back into the green and uh, brown and black that we like. All right, we're making that center. Dip in water if I need to to improve the paint. At this point in my painting, I'm I'm often dipping, and the reason I'm often dipping is that the paint has started to dry out from the heat. Mm. I'm getting a little yellow into my brush. I'll get some white and that'll give me enough of a highlight to come in and do that. A little too much there. So I'm gonna just erase it. Look at me go. <laughs> just tucked it right back in. In my blue and my black, but much more blue and my tinting white. Just tapping in those little bits of seeds, right? And that just pops those flowers. Now, I've got my round brush and I'm going to stick here and I'm going to start my daisies. And so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start getting into more of my white. You know, my whites are a big deal. And I'm going to come here and as carefully as I can, I'm going to try to paint this daisy. If I need more Prussian to shade out, I will. Rinse, rinse, rinse. And get some just white. Come get my yellow. Go ahead and highlight that button. And while I'm here, maybe I'll highlight that button and that button because it's fun. And I'm going anyway, so. <laughs> I'm on it. I'm doing it. Highlight that button. ahead and start really talking about these petals in a more considered way. You can see I'm like really shaping those out. I'm just going to use my round brush 
to get these details in. We are shockingly nearly done. I know. With Lechosa. So I feel like we've really covered this idea that sometimes uh, women of strength are a little bit vilified in mythology. <laughs> and we painted her in a way that uh, Maleficent would appreciate. <laughs> mm-hmm. I like this. It's looking good. You know, and again, I kind of go through, I take the time that I take on my lessons, but it's okay if you guys want to spend, you know, five or six hours just on flowers. That doesn't hurt anything. I am not offended by that experience. If that makes sense. I'm going to take a little of my black and my yellow ochre. I'm going to go around and sort of finish the button that tucks these petals into the yellow. Yeah, the shadow kind of tucks them in. Mm -hmm. Tuck in your flowers. They're sleepy. I'll go ahead and get a lot more white and a little yellow. Enjoy those little highlights. Maybe I'll put some there. It'll be fun to put on the white as well. Now I'm going to grab some more white. Highlight here. But when I come over this one, I'll leave some of those in shadow. Just to sort of shade the petals. Mm. So beyond layering them, if I leave some of them in kind of a shadow space, it will also help give the flower some shape into the light or not light. But on other ones, you can really go full court. Turn your canvas, not your head. Lesson from the easel. Okay, guys, I'm super pleased with her. I know she was a lot of work. Lessons from the easel. I know she was a lot of work, but I am way pleased with her. And look how we tuck these flowers in. I am loving it. Now I feel like they have some form, and we've just got some corn flowers, and we're, boom, ready to sign her. Mm -hmm. I'm going to sip my coffee and say hi. So how are you guys doing? Are you liking the depth and the way that, you know, she's, she's realistic, but she's not like, Boom! You got to like worry about every vein and you kind of love the color palette. This is amazing. Now, th there is some question on uh, whether or not you should varnish this. Um, so here's the here's the straight straight scoop on varnishing. And um, as many of you know, I'm rebooting 20, 2016's Big Art Quest at some point here. Are you? It to be this year, but we're still finishing 2018. Um, what all the paint experts have come back with. Now, what, what the restoration communities and what the STM has come back with is that acrylic paint paintings don't need to be varnished. And it may actually make it harder for them in restoration. They just kind of have been talking about this lately. However, that doesn't mean you don't want to varnish an acrylic painting. Um, if you have a lot of different um, matte and shine and semi-matte and it's disrupting the finish of the painting, you may want to unify the finish. So you might varnish to unify it. Um, uh, a gloss varnish deepens the color 
it's like, you know, when you make a, a rock wet and you can see all the color? Yeah. Does the same thing to your painting. And varnish absolutely does protect your painting from like weird things like kids' sticky fingers or as one viewer had, uh, uh, deer blood. Mm. <laughs> Their husband rendered the deer right next to her art. I guess they were oh, sharing some space. That's right. That so, was some craziness. Varnish can be good in those moments. And you may want some. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Surprise. Mm -hmm. Surprise. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know why that pleases me so much, but it does. I'm going to thin my um, brush in here. And I'm going to start putting in my little corn flowers. Let's find a little spot. I think uh, perhaps right here. I want you just to flowers. do little, little bits of strokes. See, I'm pulling this back. Where I want the petals to be closer to me, the strokes will actually be shorter. And I'm doing just the pressure. This is the darker value. Now, where I'm going to be down kind of in shadow, I'm going to go ahead and use my tint white just to improve that we can even see see this some actually now i'm looking at it guys i don't like the pressure yeah this. no i don't i'm gonna get my dogs out watch this don't like it i'm gonna get my phthalo out and get some doxazine out i'll put the cad back out at the well i can put it out now i've got just enough to finish these flowers off There we go. So now I'm going to get my phthalo blue and my purple. There we go. That's what I wanted. I always feel like, oh, if you're doing something, you're like, man, I thought this was going to be it, but I got in it and I don't love it. Don't feel like you got to just stick with it because you had mm. an idea. Right. Because you don't. You don't need to. Weird. Yeah, over there. Putting oh, out you're getting tinting I, white. I like, Where'd you go? And I'm going to put out some fresh white because I want everything. Everything is gummy at this point. So the quality of my paint. Hey, hello. Everything's gummy. So the quality of my paint has gone down. So sometimes mm. I'll put out fresh because, yes, I can keep modifying. But sometimes I don't want to fight the issues with the paint. So I'm going to take this. You can see that I, I can reveal the color without substantially changing it. Oh, there we go. That's what we we're looking for. First layer are always the best. And the other thing about these dark values is that, believe it or not, you can leave them tucked in the grass. So it implies these deeper sets of flowers that are in there, but you don't have to make every one of them focal. Let's put one kind of in front of everything here, maybe a bit. I think that and like some little peaks of blue here and there, I think is always good. Mm. I like it. Okay. I do too. So I just look for balance. Now I'm going to take my blue and uh, my tinting white. My phthalo blue and my tinting white.
Spring flowers are a very petally flower. They're like a little explosion. And their color is very rare in the flower world. You know, you don't get a lot of this kind of blue in plants. And so it's important that we're celebrating it. And it's okay to pick up little pops of blue here and there on the flowers that you're hiding in the grass. Because you know, you're a painter. You are a painter. You can do those things. Da, 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 da. Just popping little bits of blue here and there around the surface. One last pass. And rinse out. I'm going to take a little of my blue over to my white. And you're going to notice that the blue and the white together, the titanium white, it's a whole nother level. You don't want to do it on every petal. You want to do it on some. Isn't that great? Yeah. So pretty. So pretty. I love that this is one you've claimed. Can you also claim the 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 elfish too, though? Oh yeah. Well, I can just you know may have got claim them all. May have a Fe few. If we ever get a future office, I think the nicest room in my house is actually my set. That, it's the space I like the most. We need a bigger house because we have too much <laughs> set storage in other rooms. You just can't. But it really is like I love my wall with the greenery and the flowers and got my unicorn fit. You don't get to see everything because I'm in the pocket of curtains, which is a whole learning curve that we had about setting up sets. <laughs> but I just love it so much. You can't even imagine. I can. I love that. Isn't that great? Yeah. Get your red. Can you believe that? Look at that. <gasps> mm -hmm. I think it's time to sign her. We did her. She is probably next to the Koi Mermaid, one of the more challenging ones that we've done. Yeah. I think so. I think she's been... Um, there we go. There's a signature brush that'll work. I think she's been, yeah, one of, one of the much more challenging paintings that we've had to, like, work out. And so I am pretty darn good. Yeah, I'm going to do blue. I sign in a way that upsets framers. 
<laughs> it's true. Right towards the edge. Yeah, where they've really got to think about how they're framing. That's really All nice. All right, let's look at her. Let's get, let's do a pass over her and then look straight on. All right. So give them a close-up pass. Ooh. They can see the work that they've done. That's pretty awesome. Look what you guys did. Well, and you believe. I like the painting better than the digital collage by miles. Oh, yeah, me too. You know, the digital collage is a way that I can kind of get my ideas out and express them to you and say, hey, this is the direction I think we're going to go. But oftentimes I find that the paintings that I get to do, I like it so much. Look at me. I'm like, she's more important than me. <laughs> <laughs> turned out really good. Really, really good. good. She turned out really good. Um, we're starting the next one next Thursday. Thursday, so you, Thursday, Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. Big art quest is Thursday. Why is it Thursday? Because arbitrarily on 2016, I made it Thursday. And now it just is into perpetuity. Um, and she's going to be a lot of fun. We're not actually changing too much from the actual reference. Just simply because the reference was like straight up perfect. So I was like, well, what more could we add to that? You know, we might obviously will be pushing the elements a bit and saturating them some and maybe adding some magic sparkle and some stuff like that. But for the most part, she is who she is. And then after that is Oya. And then after that is the Snow Maiden. And we will have wrapped up 2018 Square. That's pretty awesome. Woo! Be good to yourself. Be good to each other. And I want to see you in an easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.